Shalom, it's Selfie Kids, aka Selfie Sunday. So welcome back to my season 12 of Selfie Sunday. So I just want to kind of go back into this. Um, You guys know I feel more, well, if you don't know, you guys can go watch previous seasons. I have those up. I took a long pause just to work on some other avenues of communication within my business model. Um, But yeah, so we're going to be talking about this episode. You guys know I always start off with my intentions, so let's start off with that, and then we're gonna go with some quotes and oopsie, some quotes and you know the regular shebang, um, the same uh, instruction, the the same you know format. How I start that. I mean, this is so long. Oh my gosh. Okay, okay, okay. I'm gonna keep this in because I feel like this is like you know letting you guys know what it is. Okay. So let me just put everything where I like need it because I didn't do that before I even started. But yeah. Cheers if you're new. Welcome back if you're old, okay? So my intention is to create an open dialogue with myself and others that make it comfortable to secure, to be secure in talking about and breaking dating social norms, okay? So that is just going to be um, pretty much just kind of covering the basis of what a, so, a social norm is, aka you guys meet, you guys court, you guys go out, you guys probably have some sex, you guys meet the family, et cetera, et cetera, whatever order that you have. But I technically do not do that norm, okay? And I think I kind of want to discuss that now before I kind of like came out in my new relationship or came out in any of my other, you know, because I never really have an open public relationship, which is not, a, you know, dating social norm. Um, I also don't really announce anybody like I may announce them socially, but that is probably like the furthest to go. I have developed a lot of skills over the um, or came in contact with a lot of the skills that I have had. Um since starting this journey you know the selfie sunday journey and it's always been something that i've been like okay i'll get more i'll get really really excited about the things that i know about myself but to actually hone in those abilities and hone in those those skill on those skills has also been a very like super different challenge you know it's been a difficult challenge for me especially in dating okay because i didn't know the boundaries that i should have with myself and how to you know display those characteristics within my relationship without feeling taken advantage of and I think those were underdeveloped skills when I first started this because people will see your potential and not tell you about it until, you know, you figure it out for yourself, which is best because you would, if someone told you you were going to be the next yeah, 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 you wouldn't believe it until you became that yeah, 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 okay? So that kind of was one of those things where I had to learn for myself. And once I learned those skills and actually studied my birth chart and like, you know, when these type of events would be taking place and how I should actually, um, target these events for myself you know what i mean like after an event happened i would have to like take a, a deep introspection and go through that so now that i finally you know kind of got the hang of things and how i should you know manage my um my gifts and abilities because we already talked about you know we talked about that in pre previous episodes you know you having um you know special gifts and abilities that you should practice and work towards daily okay so that's kind of the dialogue that I wanted to create with you guys in, you know, secure and breaking dating social norms. Because you guys know I started off with like talking about heartbreak and side chicks and role playing and all that extra stuff that just kind of like really became overwhelming for me, I would say the least. Uh, but yeah, okay, so we're going to get into that. I want to do a law of attraction affirmation um, and then we're going to move on. I have a new deck, so I kind of like to bring that in. You know, I still do my cards, but I haven't made them as super decorated just because I kind of want to jump into it this episode and then see where I really want to go. And I definitely do think I like the, you know, on the Sunday episode type activity, okay? I like the raw upload. I am going to edit this a bit just so I can have, you know, some clear communication happening here, okay? Ooh, I read this earlier today when I was watching Lori's interview with PLL or PLT. So that, this is kind of like an affirmation, so... I'll let it go. Okay, so the law of attraction adds power to both problems and solutions, okay? So this is the card, and I think this is this was actually fitting just to continue to carry that on because I feel like some of the conversations that we have are going to be based on the women that are present today that are like a lot more bolder than me or have the same equilibrium of boldness that I appreciate and admire, okay? So the realization that something is not as you want it to be as important is an important first step. But once you have identified that, the faster you are able to turn your attention into the direction of, of a solution, the better, because a continuous exploration of the problem will prevent you from finding the solution, okay? 
So continuing exploration of the problem will prevent you from finding the solution, okay? So don't dwell into your problems. Dwell, you know, um, seek a solution, ask the questions for the problem to be solved, okay? The problem is a diff different vibrational frequency from the solution, okay? So I'll talk about that in a minute. And after all, thoughts or vibrations are affected or managed by the law of attraction, okay? Okay, so that is going to be the affirmation for today. <sighs> I know this is so long ah, i know i'm always excited just to like have that like make it a real personal dialogue rather than like you know okay i'm giving advice la, la, la. um okay so i have a poem it's from a great short stories um i just found these books like this sitting under my mom's desk so i was like okay let me just see what that's about so it's from this okay it's by sir george eth the ridge okay so from 1635 to 1691 that's his lifespan okay to a lady asking him how long he would love her it is not sillier in our power to say how long our love would last. It may be within this hour, may lose these joys we now do taste. The blessed, it's something like they said, the blessed, the blessed that be immortal from change and in love are only free. Then since we mortal lovers are, ask not how long our love would last, but while it does, let us take care. Each minute be with pleasure past where it is not madness to deny, to live because we are sure to die. Okay, uh, of course, I'll leave an excerpt up there for you guys to view it yourself. But yes, okay, so and I also have another one that I want to talk about. It's in the quote, The Lady, Her Lover, and the Lord by T.D. Jakes. You guys know I use all references for, um, you know, inspiration. And I found this book um, maybe two weeks ago. Again, my parents be having like books out of nowhere. I'm like, where do you guys get this stuff? Okay, so this is about communication and relationships, okay? And I know you guys, we talked about um, how sometimes it's difficult to, for a woman to communicate or be a powerful woman next to a powerful man. They always say the great quote is, behind a powerful man is an even more powerful woman, okay? And that may not be the quote, but it's, you know, the woman is powerful behind that man, okay? I.e. so many, you know, relationships like Michelle Obama and, you know, um, uh, Obama <laughs> you know what I'm saying so you don't even I don't even look at Obama no more or Barack I say uh, Michelle Obama and then you know the Obama because she carries his last name so she is technically him a representative of, of him okay and then we have uh Jackie Kennedy which is again another powerful leadership okay and then we also have other couples I don't know any other couples right now but anyway so we're gonna move forward okay so this is a, um page 76 if you guys have this book or want to check it out in your local library or buy it from the online retailers he engaged in a conversation with her and then, okay, so this is the, he appealed to her need to communicate, okay? So find someone that brings out your authentic voice. Find someone that does not minimize your voice, okay? And that's always been really important for me because I know I'm, I'm, I'm a Gemini. I'm meant to communicate. I am meant to be a communicator, okay? And I'm not to be the one that dulled in my communications. I'm not to be the one to be um, muted in anything, you know? But I do have some questions that are going to go along with this so you guys can know, like, you know, kind of like the social norms of, it. you know, how these dynamics work when, you know, there is a form of, you know, someone who's a vocalist and someone who's a orator, okay? So there's someone who can be like the man he speaks for and then that woman she speaks as, okay? So remember that quote, the woman speaks for, the man speaks as or vice versa, okay? Depending on who's a dominant for, uh, vocalist and orator in the relationship, okay? He engaged in a conversation with her and, in, and enticed her with speech. Lies cloaked in smooth words beguiled her. It is still tactic today. It is still his tactic today. Words are some of the strongest weapons against women. Women are by nature communicators, okay? They treasure conversation. They use it to articulate their needs and appreciate it as a means to understand others. They value words so much that they use correctly that they can win a woman's heart, okay? that used correctly, they can win in woman's heart. So a man has a speech that is like, okay? You guys know what it takes to get your panties off. And I'm just gonna use it that term because it's just, you know, the slipping of, okay? The slipping of vulnerability. So whenever I say like you're taking your panties off, it does not literally mean go take your drawers off or anything like that. It's just a form of speech to say that you are in a vulnerable state, okay? When you bear nude, you bear yourself, you bear your skin, you bear your, you know, your avenue of, you know, communication. All right, so any womanizer would tell you that his hook in the conversation, that, that that is in his hook of conversation. He lures women through speech. Any pastor would tell you that the most difficult thing to get a woman to do in ministry is to be silent. 
Any husband will tell you that, that whenever there isn't anything going on in the family, the first thing a woman wants to do is discuss it. Okay, Satan took advantage of his love to communicate to deceive Eve. He still employs this method today. He is the womanizer trapping a woman in an abusive relationship. He is a false friend leading a woman down the road to temptation. He is a manipulator using harsh words and cruel intentions to make a woman feel worthless. Words are a powerful tool for evil. So women beware, okay? But a woman's innate love for communication can also be her ally. She is the most formidable prayer warrior to the church has ever seen. Her ability to articulate her need to discuss make a powerful force that is unstoppable and bombarding heaven. She gets released through communicating and she is also a weapon against Satan whenever she uses propensity to speak for the purpose it was created, okay? She is an arsenal of prayer and a missile of faith. She is powerful with a gift aimed to the real target, the real enemy, okay? The enemy is not men in general. The enemy is the spirit that may have operated in a man or woman in your past. The enemy is at work when anyone uses words to deceive you, mislead you, or cause you pain. Okay, beware of sweet words and false promises. Beware of the folk toward, oh, the fork tongue devil whispering lies. Beware of the enemy, en enemy, enemy, enemy. And so you use words for prayer, okay? So I'm going to do some words and then I'm going to go over into the next speech, which is talking about more of the what we were going to bring the subject in, which is, um, you know, finding solutions and breaking their dating social norms, okay? So we're going to go back to that. Or, okay, we'll go, yeah. Okay, so I have some questions for you guys. Why are women's voices matter aside from the leadership in a man's? Okay, so why women's voices matter aside with? Okay, so we know aside is aside, and then we say with. So a man always needs to include what he speaks to be supported by the woman that he speaks with, okay? So if you converse in, and I always say this, and I know I don't like to always, you know, reiterate the same things that I iterate on my channel via tarot and via this way as well. But if you guys know, everything flows together through the week. So it's able to be congruent with everything that I do, okay? So my speech is not, it's lapping over rather than lapping separately, Okay. Um, but yeah, so why women's voices matter aside with the leadership of a man. So if a man is speaking, right, and we, we're, we're wanting to listen, we're basically saying make sure we're finding the deception in his voice so we're not being beguiled or um, by bombarded because you know how to use the bombarded into heaven. So we have to say bombarded with a deception. Okay, so we have to ask ourselves, why, what is the things that men say to us that makes us vulnerably um misled okay and because there's there's is there when we when we expect a man to be a leader we expect him to be truthful honorable integral with his word and as well with the woman how we're we supposed to be able to converse that back if we already feel that anything that we say is being um manipulated against us okay so that was one thing in past relationships that i feel like i did not want to speak a po like i didn't want to speak towards because Oh my gosh, guys, I had so many dating freaking things and it has happened over this time. So I don't even know where to start, but I also don't like to give people, you know, anyone that I have dismissed from my soul or my spirit, um, you know, a star or a supporting role in my life. Um, I'm going to focus on what I have currently and presently, but I think I definitely have realized that I've been able to read between the lines of people who speak deceptively, but then now need to retract those words and statements for the purpose of, okay, now I see I can't fool this woman. Okay, I see I have target women who are maybe naive and speech or maybe naive and, pardon. Mm-hmm. Okay, yeah, somebody didn't want me to say that. It's cool, though. You know, because you have to think about this. I remember, I can see a man and I can tell why he doesn't choose me, why he'll choose another woman over me. And it's usually an age difference. I, I'm just going to say it. It's usually an age difference that a man does not choose me versus choosing another type of woman, okay? And it's I've always been mature for my age. I've always been, you know a little bit more articulate for the average my person age conversation um even dating a man at a higher age level for me is is important because not saying i can't date someone my same age but it's not likely okay it's not very likely i need at least a five to ten year age gap 15 is even like pushing it but i prefer that in that in that because my mind moves into decades okay 
I've never been the type of person that communicated in smaller increments. I communicate with large depth, okay? So you have to be able to measure yourself as a woman, as a side. Who do you communicate with and how, what is your lifespan of communication, okay? Because again, I just read something that was from 16, uh, what was it, 1631 or whatever, to 1635 to 1691. That's a huge, like, that's that's a speech of history, okay? So you have to be say you have to also know what type of history you speak within your tongue as well, okay? So this is always just you know, this is always just that because it, it, you know it, it really does tie into everything that you do, and it really does tie into everything that you say, okay? So just you know, the, I want you guys. I feel like this is we have matured as like a as a as a channel as a relationship. We have matured in that aspect, so there will be a, a point of maturity where you say, okay, well, I know the age of my, my tongue. I know the age of my wisdom, okay? So knowing those things are really, really important as well, okay? You see how this has even involved, like, from then to there. Like, I was a straight shooter then, and now I can kind of freestyle into more depth of how I speak, okay? Um, and then the development of my tongue, I can confidently say these things, you know, than when I could back then. Okay. I needed a lot of resources. I needed a lot of pre-research, et cetera, et cetera. So I'm grateful for that as well. But like I said, measure the voice that you have with the man that you are side with and that you are choosing with. Okay. There's nothing like a meek woman that does not need to be meek when her voice has a, you know, a greater, um, communication form for her. Okay. So it's just important. All right. So what are ways as women you like to be spoken for in a relationship? So here with this, okay, so anyone that is interested in dating me, you would know a few things that I do like to be spoken with. When it comes to ordering, I feel like it is very important for a man to can order every, everything at the table. Um, let me just tell you why, because I feel like I've always, I'm not really like insecure when it comes to like women and like, you know, the need for to bounce that sexual energy off each other because it's important, you know, like you think about like, why, did, why did I get married to or whatever, or why did I get married the first movie? And like, you know, Marcus and Tasha, you always think about why she's so excessive with her need to, because he was a liar and she knew his lying pattern, okay? So just taking that movie as a reference. But then you also think about why did Natasha now herself, because she was very dominant and masculine, okay? She was a masculine voice. She was a masculine woman. And you wonder when she was like kissing his ASS, you knew that that was how she got him, but that was not how she maintained the spirit with him, okay? How she maintained fluid with him. And maybe that was their attraction, even in that movie, um... That movie, best it I ever had, what that movie was in. Okay, so things like that, you ask yourself, you know, what is the balance? Because they was always arguing, but secretly in love. The Kevin Hart and I think her name was Regina. So that those two, you have to think about those type of dynamics. A couple, I know that exists. I know people like that kinky stuff. I'm with that kinky shit, you know, so I'm, I'm all about it. But there is a certain level of, you know, how do you become more softer as a woman and then you know allow the man to be masculine and that in that aspect if you like if you like your man to be you know go ahead baby you speak then you do that you know what i'm saying then that that is the dynamic of your relationship but then you also have that you know that conversation with yourself where how do i like to be treated as a um a whole woman or a whole being okay because the balance in masculine and feminine has to be congruent in a relationship because there is overactiveness of everything and then there's underactiveness of other of, 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 there's underactiveness of other things as well, okay? So anyway, so like I said, what are ways you like to be spoken to spoken for in a relationship? Okay, so you would think I will be like, yeah, I use my speech and my platform to be very super communicative. I love to speak. Um I do think everything I say is important. <laughs> so, of course, I have, like, a, you know, that, like, mild arrogance when it comes to my speech. And I want someone that can, you know, work the conversation with me, work, and then also make their self worth speaking to, okay? You have to always make yourself worth speaking to. So, like I said, in the restaurant, for me, I prefer, you know, the man to order. If we have a female waitress, go off, get your thing off, you know what I mean? Don't obviously take it too further than a form of disrespect and non-disrespect. You know, it's always levels of respect that should be, you know, respected. But for me, I'm just like, go ahead, talk to her. Let her say it. Like, you know what I mean? Let me look like the person that does not bother because I'm never bothered, you know? But it is a form where you're like, okay. And when the man knows your order, that is important for me, okay? So that's a social norm that I feel like people should maintain that's one thing that i maintain the man should know the order of his woman and himself okay and maybe even the table but you know you know that's just like ordering the main of okay so like if we say if you were on a double date i would expect the two men to speak to the waitress or the wait her okay for that purpose of us not even having to deal with um her not wanting to hear us because you know women come to the table to please the man not us 
And you have to always remember that. And I learned that as a um, as a waitress or a hostess myself, I was just like, okay, well, I'm going to great, greet the woman and maintain the relationship with the man that I assume is paying, okay? But I have made, I don't call it a mistake. I have made the observation that a woman did want to be treated more, you know what I mean, more gracefully when she was paying. Because it was like her man's birthday or something like that. I was like, okay, girl, I got you. I can make sure you're the big dog at the table. You're the big dog at the table. Um, and that was really, like, really important as well, just to know how to um, kind of gender switch in a um, communication, okay? But yeah, so I'm really into that um, just because I feel like, you know, the man should have that type of open relationship or dialogue with women still. Um, another thing is I don't prefer to let you be my family, but that's kind of like some of the things I'm like, okay, I changed my mind about that. Like I kind of learned my lesson with the whole not letting the man meet your family because you didn't feel like the relationship was going to last. But sometimes you can just feel the energy of a person and how they're maneuvering, okay? I'm not going to have multiple men meet my family. Like, okay, I'm not going to have multiple men meet my family. I'm also not going to be, um, I'm just not really a person that likes to like parade around somebody. I don't feel like it's going to last with it. And even if it does last, you know, I don't want the impression of someone bringing that person back to me because I, you know, I, again, like I just said, I speak for 10 years in advance. If I know 10 years in advance, you are not going to be someone in my life plan or lifestyle based off, you know, the beginning of the relationship. Um, I think it's really, really important. I also am not really big on, um, where we're okay where i like to be spoken for um i think the announcement of the relationship you know what i mean i think the person should state what they are i would tell you i'm single the whole time even if we're in a relationship and you think that we're in a relationship because at the end of the day did you have you announced me properly you know i take being announced properly um really important a lot of men like to leave women in a very weird space where they don't know then that's the space they like to keep them in because again when you don't know you you stay around for the answer okay so that's the same thing as okay finding um okay so the problem is a different vibrational frequency from the solution okay the solution will be asking my man to speak for the relationship and the aspect where i feel represented and included in his decision making you know what i'm saying so that's one thing i very like to be spoken for um I could say my man all day, but I can tell you on a, on, a, on a real target level or a real surface level, I am a I am a single woman for that purpose of I'm not being represented by a man who know how to speak higher than my just my small terms. Okay, um, my stepmother told me a long time ago, and I just like to say my mother. So my mother told me a long time ago. Um, when I was younger, she always just said, don't let, nobody, don't let no man call you wifey, don't let no man call you his boo, or any of those like milder, term, milder terms, um, just because they never really represent um, the dynamic that you are you are asking to be presented in respectfully, okay? So it's like, again, that's my wifey, that's my boo, -doo -doo. Yeah, you can say that all in your songs, but that's not me who you represent, okay? And you have to ask yourself that again. What is your social norms being represented? Is that my bitch? Because you're not gonna call me your bitch, okay? I don't care. <laughs> like, I mean, maybe in a song, but again, is, is that representing me? Can I call him my my bitch in my song? You know what I'm saying? That's my bitch in my song because he packs my food. He do all this, you know. So you have to ask yourself that same um, polarity when it comes to communicating in relationships. That is important, okay? So that's just kind of like where I like to be spoken for and the announcement of a relationship, as well as. Um, I guess really, you know, ordering, et cetera, et cetera, like that. Anything that requires order. Um, I don't want to get into the financial because I have another book on that. But anyway, we're going to move on for that. Um, I'm also going to go ahead and discard this quote um, because it's going to be for next week's episode. But I can give you a little preview. And this is a, um, this is going to be an excerpt into next week's episode, okay? But if any provide for his own, and especially for those of his own house, he has to deny the faith and is worse than an infidel, okay? So that is in chapter or the book of one, one book, book one, Timothy in five age, chapter five, verse eight, okay? So that's going to be into next week's episode, okay? Um, that's just a preview of when we talk about money and the uh, social norms of money, okay? So yeah, what would you guys, you guys can comment below. What are ways as women you like to be spoken for? So how do you like your man to announce you? Um, what are some terminologies that you like to be called that are enduring, but also um, a guarantee of a relationship, a guarantee of foundation and stability within the union rather than disrespect, okay? Um, and then also, who should you avoid in the beginning of a new relationship? I'm going to go ahead and discard that out because I like to edit as I go. And that's why I'm editing. But I always say avoid anyone that isn't, in the that is probably that's still dealing with heartbreak because I don't want to bring heartbreak into a new form of relationship with myself. Um, avoid anyone that 
<sighs> don't actually support your happiness, but they support your misery, avoid them people, okay? Because you can't start something new with someone with the evil eye on you, okay? All right, and there's some terms I want to use. It's misogyny and womanizer, okay? So, aka Britney Spears, womanizer, womanizer. All right, that is a charming man who um, engages in numerous casual sexual relationships with women, okay? So that, again, you have to, when a man, okay, so when a man chooses you and he's a womanizer, he has to be mature enough to be able to switch that, 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 era, that aura of display and you have to allow him to know. You have to, as a woman, you can't go in a relationship with a man who is a womanizer or a casual relationship person like he has casual affairs but maybe not strong foundational relationships and say you are the woman that because every man there is men that change for the women they have you know what I mean for the women they want okay and when that when that opportunity their time comes in you have to be allowing of his his nature to still be fluid okay so it's kind of like how do you deal with a womanizer okay but i'm not saying i'm the queen of it because i obviously you know it is what it is but that that is still something that I again believe that will work in the dynamic of a relationship rather than work against the dynamic of the relationship okay because you know who you attract period you heard the stories okay <laughs> you ain't gotta oh you ain't gotta ask you ain't gotta tell all right so misogyny the dislike or contempt of or ingrained prejudice against women okay so I don't know the term for you know women who hate men so I would like to talk about the opposite of that but there is a strong prejudice that comes against women having a voice you know what i mean i think that's the only term that i want to kind of grant you know gain from that is a man who probably has been over masculated or talked down to as a father okay so like say if as a okay say if as a man you are you remember your childhood that your mom talked at you down to you and uh towards you rather than with you okay you wouldn't have that time you wouldn't have that conversation with the woman naturally as an adult man because you feel you know you were never respected vocally. So again, you will want a, a, a silent woman. You will want a woman to shut the fuck up and let you sing, okay? <laughs> but she's like, shut the fuck up and let me sing. I gotta find that quote so we can insert that. But okay. But that's just gonna pretty much wrap up the episodes for me. Um, again, I hope that the law of attraction adds power to both problems and solutions for you, okay? And make sure you are maintaining the frequency to find solutions and maintain and dissolve, dispelling this uh, frequency that creates problems, okay? Okay, let me get another little belt job real quick. Excuse me, all right. <laughs> that's how it is. That's how I be announcing myself or other people. Other people with me. Okay. So, some subjects of this focus of this season, okay? So, when you guys come back and return to next Sunday, you will have this episode, or you guys can be looking forward to those type of things, okay? So I pretty much gave you a preview into next week's episode. We're going to be talking about the um, role of the man's house, okay? Or taking care of, of those of his home, okay? And then, so some, anyway, some subjects of the focus of the season is going to be hypergamy. Hypergamy. I do not know how to say this word. And I hear it, okay? Hypergamy. Okay, so that is the woman be seeking a man of a social sta a, so a certain social status, okay? And being able to maintain that man at that social status, okay? And then we have feminine and masculine balance, okay? And then some also some other topics that we're going to be talking about is platonic and relationship boundaries. So we're going to circle that boundary word. And then we're going to also be um, continuing to bring in conversation, okay? Uh, law, I said conversation. <laughs> law of attraction, all right? So I thank you guys for tuning into my episodes. I didn't know they were going to get long, but I think they're all. All right, so you guys go ahead and be a star of your own show. Um, and then talk to me later. Please leave your comments below. And yeah. <laughs> oh, welcome back, Nicole. I'm just crazy. I'm just crazy love with this. I really love this. I really missed, you know, these conversations that I used to have because I feel like they... I can actually talk about the masculine a little bit more, you know, than I used to. Which is really important, okay? All right, so shalom. Talk to you guys soon. See you next week. Oh, happy March. Happy springtime. Springtime. I love spring. That's my favorite. It's my favorite season. <laughs> shalom.